The Sam Livecast is brought to you by Fixers Living. Check them out on the internet at fixersliving.com or love them on the Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Fixers Living. Kitchen, bath, outdoor, joy. That's what they do. Everybody, welcome to the Sam Livecast. It's Wednesday. We're in the middle of Bread Week. Super happy to be here. A lot of stuff to talk about today. How, is, how are you boys in the back? Fantastic. Who doesn't love Bread Week? Yeah, Good. Yeah, people that are on a no-carb diet. <laughs> Our true. people who just had to go a certain amount of time without eating uh, leavened bread. I don't know about you, but I'm over matzah. Oh, I'm never over matzah. Really? No, and for people that don't know what Max is talking about... The Jews uh, during the week of Passover don't eat anything with yeast in it because as the Jews were fleeing Egypt, um, they didn't have time to let their bread rise because they were so worried about the Egyptians coming after them Mm -hmm. that they split in a hurry. They didn't give time to let their bread rise, and it was flat, like a cracker, like the matzah that we now eat today. So for the week of Passover, people don't eat any leavened bread products. I'm, so, never, I'm never tired of matzah, and I never really eat it outside of this week, but I could eat it more often. There's nothing better than a piece of bread, a piece of matzah with butter on it, so delicious, or matzah and eggs, also called matzah brai. Mm. Didn't we do it here? We did. We did, we did yeah. It. And people thought it was weird, but when you taste it, the what you think is just weird matzo and crackers. Yeah. I mean, sorry, a, scrambled eggs with crackers in it, suddenly not so bizarre. If you want to see that recipe and more, all you got to do is go to thesamlivecast.com and head search. There it is. What's even more effed up about it is that we serve it with jam. Yeah. Some yeah. people like it with like uh, syrup. Some people like it with sugar. I like it with jam on the side. It's, it's actually not that messed up. I mean, basically you're taking dough, mixing it with egg, turning right. it into like a patty and then... But now that I think about it, are there any other egg recipes that are commonly used with jam? Like, what other breakfast egg recipes do you know that you put jam on your eggs? I mean, you use jam on pancakes and toast and stuff, but I don't know any other egg recipes. I guess, but it's actually a great, great recipe. My thinking was those have eggs in it. Like, if you do like of like a crepe, it has like an egg flavor too. Mm -hmm. Right, Mm -hmm. that's true. Put jam to tell us. Yeah, that's true. But I'm getting off. I'm getting. I'm getting away from my list of things to talk about. The first thing to talk about. Let me see you both, both of you boys in there. Mm-hmm. Yo. Lynn is still sick. <laughs> it's been, I don't know how many days. He still has the plague. And by the way, Feels he's like now giving it to Max. So. I got it. Max now has it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm getting through it. I As think. I said the other day, if, if Lynn was conscientious enough to wear the mask like the rest of his people, he'd be uh, okay. Yeah, Thank maybe you. Yeah, Thank you for can that. Can you hear what I'm saying now? At least you're doing that part. Yeah, mm. geez. Uh, you guys read about this, no doubt. Two Russian cosmonauts and a U.S. astronaut took a shortcut to the International Space Station last week, arriving at the outpost, ready for this? Mm -hmm. Less than six hours after their Soyuz capsule blasted off from Kazakhstan. They went from Kazakhstan to the International Space Station in less than six hours. Wait, so you're telling me the time it takes for us to drive to, like... (laughs) San, San Jose, Francisco, yeah. well, they can know. get to the space station. Apparently, they took a shortcut. And what's really amazing about this is after the last live cast shoot, yeah. it took Max three and a half hours to get to <laughs> L.A. from San Closer Diego. To four. <laughs> Slightly more to get to the space Jeez. station, apparently. But so how long? The, I don't know how they did it. The, nor- the, the, normal, short, the normal trip is 45 hours. That's what, so that's a, how long? I did, don't know what they did. In 1969, how long did it take for them to get to the, to the moon? Was that like a couple day trip or was that like an afternoon? I wasn't there. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I was young. I was only 10. <laughs> that's true. I was only 10. That's true. Shit. Just a quick shortcut to the space station. Can you it's believe space. that? space. Where do you get a shortcut there. from? I know. I, don't I would like to be there. Would you like to be there? Yes. If they said, we've worked out all of the issues with air and, and whatever, and we're going to be able to put people on Mars or some other planet, but we need this, we need pioneers to go and start setting up and blah, blah, blah. Would you guys be interested in that? Yeah. 
I mean, Max, why not? Yes, yes, I would. Hesitation? I mean, it's a little bit scary. It's not exactly a perfected technology, space travel, I don't think. No, no, no. I'm saying if they had the space travel part done. Okay. And it was like... And they figured out how you could live on a distant planet. Mm -hmm. Would you be excited? Would I be excited about that? Think about the pioneer aspect of it. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it depends on how old I am too, right? Yeah. Like, if I'm in great shape and I can go and I'm like, you know, nearing 60 or something, like, that'd be a great way to go, man, if you die in space. No, I see your point, though, Dad. It's like, nowadays, (laughs) there's no um, unexplored territory, really. There's no new frontier, whereas 150 years ago, the western United States, where we are right now, was the new frontier. Right. It's exciting, yeah. It's a I cool think it would thing. be huge, I, and it's going to happen. It's certainly not going to happen in my lifetime, and I don't think it's going to happen in your lifetime. No, but, probably not. But perhaps your grandchildren, both of you, your grandchildren will get to the point where they're able to do something like Who that. Who knows? You know, isn't the point of not of the future that we don't really even know what's going to happen? Forty years ago, they would never have been able to conceive of some of the things we have now. That's so probably we, true. Yeah, I mean, have you seen the whole That's axe? Completely true. Yeah. Yeah. The Axe campaign? Yeah, no. where they're like telling people they could go to space. No way. What? No, I haven't seen that. You haven't seen this? It's like all the commercials, like nothing beats an astronaut. Have you seen those commercials? No. But is it just, is it real? Like they're actually going to do it? Well, a trip to space. And yes, the we world mean actual few, space. Searching the world for a few brave civilians for the opportunity of a lifetime. But well, wait a second. There's that company that will let you fly into space, right? Virgin. Oh, yeah. Is, Virgin. Richard Branson went into space, didn't he? Yeah, they're they're already trying to pioneer the whole like um, like space tourism kind of thing. Wow. You know what? I want to live Richard Branson's life. Yeah. It's got to be nice to be an eccentric billionaire. He's got to have money like Bill Gates' money. Oh yeah. And even if it's only half, it's still more than you could ever, ever, ever spend. As Corolla says, that's not f you money. That's f me money. <laughs> that's right. You can just it's f just... yourself as much as you want. That's right. But matter. the thing is, the difference between Gates and Branson is mm-hmm. Branson, from what I can see here, mm-hmm. knows how to enjoy life. He does. Yes. Gates is very. Uh, he's I, got I the mean, Gates Foundation. He's, maybe he's doing shit that I don't know. No, you know I mean, the Gates but Foundation. he seems very conservative, and he's not like he's the biggest charitable giver in the world. I think. Right. And and. Yeah. As he should be. Uh-huh. I'm not taking anything away. I think that's incredible of him. Wow, he's not I even. Think, so you I wanna... think people that have that should. But I just feel like R- Richard Branson is living life. You want to take a guess at his uh, net worth? Branson? Yeah. I, I don't even think I know. More if you had to choose is... over under four and a half billion, what would you say? Oh, I would say over. Over? Yes. Okay. It's 4.6. That's oh, an right. estimate, but... You know what? And so and so on that list right there, what is uh, what's Gates? I have no Gates idea. Is, actually. Gates is. You know, there's a site that says that estimates celebrity net worth, and from all indications, it's complete bullshit. I suppose it is. It's it, yeah. You know. Wow. Sixty-seven. 67. So maybe it is. And it, there's a fuck you face, right? Yeah, that's. I can do anything I want. You face. know what's funny? He's number two. To Warren Buffett, or no, um, it's an Asian guy. No, right? it's the telecommunications Carlos guy in Mexico. Mexico, yeah. that's yeah, right, that's Carlos right. something. Do you know it? Carlos, Carlos Slim. Slim. Yeah, <laughs> that guy's got to be such a gangster. <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, you don't take over all of the telecommunications in Latin America without being a pretty badass, you know? Yeah, you don't mean gangster, gangster. You just mean like a well, hardcore kind of bit. Or do you? I mean, there's got to be certain. I mean, I think there's certain as- Yes, corporate gangsters. Like, I mean, yeah, but 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 no, when you say gangster, thing, but wait, you think Sopranos, but yeah, you don't. You don't mean that, no, do you? you? Could, I mean, you could argue that a lot of these guys high up in these corporate structures that have made billions of dollars have done some pretty shady stuff to get there. You I don't mean, know that Steve Jobs had to um, make the decision that they were going to exploit cheap Chinese labor to to build billions of dollars of his company. So that is pretty morally uh, questionable. I, I suppose. I mean, I'm not saying to me, maybe, maybe to I some people. Know. Oh, we're getting way off topic. Here. We are. We are, yeah. Uh, so you have, Max, a parking lot story to share. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. You started to tell me the other day, and I go, no, just save it for the live cast. Yeah. Do you want me to go? Sure, go ahead. Anyway, so Jilly and I are, uh, we went for Froyo, uh, J- two blocks from our building. So Wait we're a just, sec, Jilly, your girlfriend? My girlfriend, Jilly, and I, yes. Froyo? Froyo. Frozen Fro-yo. yogurt. <laughs> okay, speak close, slowly <laughs> so everybody understands. We went 
to get frozen yogurt yes. a couple blocks from our apartment. And on our way back... Um, Wait a sec. Do you say to Jilly, let's go get Froyo? She says, do you want, she says to me, do you want to get Froyo? And I agree, yes. All right. Um, anyway, we're walking back, and it's a crowded area, so parking is not easy to get. Yeah. And um, we're walking past this person who's waiting for... She's sitting there waiting for somebody to pull out of her spot so then she can parallel into it. She's been sitting there for a couple minutes waiting for this car. As she's about to reverse, this complete asshole guy just from the other side of the street goes like this. Head perpendicular into the park, into the sidewalk, just right into her spot as she's about to pull back into it. And then the girls, it's two, actually two women, and then I notice that they have two babies in the back seat. And they roll down the window and they're like, what are you doing? And the guy goes like this. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I just have to go in the store for five minutes and then you can have it. So they were clearly waiting for the spot? Yes. No question. No question. You the saw blinker, that happen. The was and he came out of there. nowhere? Comes out of nowhere, completely rips the spot off. He's and a then tool. Says, oh, He's no, a tool. And then, no, and then not, he, not like he just put his windows up, parked and walked away. He says, no, 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 it's fine. No, five it's minutes, not fine. Wait, it's not fine. Exactly. The guy's an asshole. And to two women and two babies? Well, to, who is to this a, guy? To a 30-year-old guy who's at the peak of fitness. Yeah. It doesn't matter. If you're waiting for a spot, and that's the problem. Could he see they were waiting for the spot? He could see, think? yes. He ah. could see because the fact that he was I so quick that. to explain that, oh, it's fine. I'm, don't worry that I stole your spot because I'll be out of here soon. I just don't uh, know who these people are. I, you know what? I made a list of things that piss me off about supermarkets mm -hmm. yeah. after hearing that. Really? That, ha that pisses me off. That's happened to me. And rather than get into a fight, because I feel like it's happened when mom was in the car and she, Kelly believes if you yell at somebody for doing something wrong in a car, they will shoot you. <laughs> so she doesn't want me to get, get all as you just said, gangster on the guy's ass. And it's not like I'm a tough guy no. or anything. I'm not. I'd get killed in any fight that I would ever be in. And I completely admit that. But I feel like you need to yell at people when they do stupid shit like that. No, it's, I it's not right. I was this close to, try, uh, to just saying to the guy, what are you doing? Come on, man. Look at them. And then Jilly pulled me back and got really upset that I was potentially going to say something. Oh, okay, so I'm going to go through. I just wrote down. You said that I wrote down 10 things that piss me off about supermarkets. Let's hear it. Here we go. Number one, people who don't put their carts back. <laughs> I mean, I've railed about this before. Yeah. No, and it's, it's true. It's insane. It's insane. So there's the people that take the cart and they push it into like the little, the little uh, tree like uh, quadrant, right? Yes which is ri ridiculous. Then there's the people that just leave it like in the spot, the stall next to them. They leave it there. In the middle of the spot. In the middle of the spot. People who park shitty. Like here's the line, here's the line, and they park there on top of the line. I <laughs> didn't take a spot this morning because somebody had done that. People who leave their dogs in a car, windows up. I won't take my dogs to the supermarket, and they love the supermarket parking lot even for two minutes if it's too warm of a day. Yeah. Even when I put my windows down. It's so dangerous. And people do that. It's terrible. How about people who leave their own personal used Kleenex <clears throat> in the cart? You ever pulled the cart out of like the whole like gang of them and yes. there's a Kleenex in there? No, yes. I don't pull carts like I, if I see anything in the cart, I usually avoid it. No, I, I go, avoid it too. I won't take it. I but go that disgusts me. You have to go immediately to the wipers. Pull one of those before you pull the cart oh. out or else you're just I know they have those they have those uh hand wipes. Hand wipes now. You the, need them. The pesticide. What are not pesticide? What is that stuff uh, called? Antibacterial <laughs> wipes. Pesticides. <laughs> pesticide with hand wipes. The people who park in a handicapped spot don't really seem like they should be in a handicapped spot. Mm -hmm. I see people pull in, they put the little thing on their on their, you know, rear view mirror, and then they get out and they walk fine into the store. And maybe I'm not seeing something that's wrong with them. But honestly, if visually you look like you walk fine into the store, should you be in a handicapped spot? No, I don't think you should. 
I, it just doesn't seem right to me. I feel like that's a fine line because you really don't know if it if it's We've walking about this or before. if it's like. I mean, I, at least fake a limp. <laughs> I don't think it's the drag walking one thing foot. That's always, Drop your shoulder and drag a, a foot. It, it, Come on. Could be. I back mean, do problem. the you know whatever it is. Do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think my mic just went out. My pack just went out. Hold on. Wait, I got to think about what I'm doing here. And the bread just went off in the oven. We haven't talked about that yet. Damn it. Hold on. You guys know how to check uh, uh, nine volts? Lick it. Completely dead. Wait with me. Hold on. Wait for it. I got one right here. <laughs> well, you I wish... I wish we were more sophisticated that we had a system that automatically. No, see, this is what. There's we, no way we there we go. We, this back. could be taken out, but we leave it in because that's what we do. Now you can hear us. All right, how about people that stand in line with an ass load of groceries? Mm -hmm. And then when the clerk says that'll be 9427, they're like surprised that they have to pay. <laughs> oh, oh, and then they start going for the wallet and the purse and the thing like that that makes me insane the checkbook how about people that are in line the ch the, the baggers are busy at another stand it's a super busy store and they won't help bag their own groceries it's because i figure people think that part of the service that they pay for mm. is that they're entitled to have someone bag their grocery for them i understand that you but what? you know what but in the interest of getting the hell out of the store, in the interest of making life easier and quicker in line for the people behind you, if you see it's not going to happen, just jump to the end and put oh, a couple not, things I'm in the fucking I'm not defending them at all. You know who those people are? Those I are the them. people that never worked as a bagger in a grocery oh. store. I've never worked as a bagger, and I know that. It's not only they never... I feel like it's just that's and, how and, they are with everything. No, right? you're totally right. They believe it's the store's responsibility. And damn it, I'm not moving until the store puts... I paid enough money for these groceries. Wow. I'm going to... You can really tell a lot about a person by the way they <laughs> act in his grocery store checkout. Absolutely. It's oh very my true. Goodness, that's insane. How about this? How about... And I love old people. I love grandmas, grandpas, old people. I, delete, wow. I believe they deserve... Tons of respect in this world. You should see this guy schmooze a table of 80-year-olds. Right. I'm really good, Nobody right? Nobody does it like him. I love them, and it's all completely from my heart. Oh, I yeah. love them. But when you get an old person in line, oh, and they don't know how to <laughs> use the card, and it's backwards, and they can't slide it, or then they wait till they hear the total, 1428, sir. Then the wallet comes out. Then the check comes out. Then they start writing, and the whole signature... Jonathan Taylor Smith Woodson. The whole, I mean, that it's too much. It's too much. That was a long how about people, about supermarkets, man. Yeah. How oh, about people, oh, how about people who take something off a shelf, put it in their cart, we'll call it sour cream, mm -hmm. walk through the store, then decide, oh, I didn't need sour cream. I needed cream cheese. So they take the sour cream out of their cart and they put it right by the dry pasta <laughs> oh, on the God. shelf. <laughs> what, what stupid mind does that? And then the last one I've got here is people who take way too long to decide. Sorry, way too long to get out of the line. Did you hear Lynn? Did yeah. you hear oh, that? Oh, I heard him. Dude, you sound like fucking Paula Deen. Oh. And I know you're not a smoker. She smokes? Are you kidding? Really? Oh, she's like yeah. a heavy smoker, huh? Listen to her laugh sometime. Oh. She's got a smoker's laugh. <laughs> uh, how about the people that they pay and then they don't get out of the line for another 48 seconds? Yeah. Because then they start putting everything away. The card goes, no, the card doesn't go. It goes back to this one and the bills have to be things and the close up and then they take the receipt and they, the receipt goes in here and then they organize and stuff and then this shuts and then I got to put it in my purse and then my wallet and this things that goes here and there's organized this stuff and then there's still, and all you want to do is get going and they're standing there taking an extra minute getting their shit together. You know, I have a prediction. Yes. Okay, so we talk about people with checkbooks right now, right? Yes. I think that in the near future, it's going to be, we're going to complain about people with credit cards because you can just like swipe your phone across mm. the thing. Like, why can't you just swipe You're the right, phone? You're right, that's going to happen. And people are like, 
man, who uses credit cards at the grocery store anymore? Like that's so, it takes so long. You have to swipe it through and then you have to wait for it to clear and then you have to sign your name. Well, you're right. It's, 2000, co- it's 2013. It's going to happen. A lot of companies it's, are starting to have that, right? It's going to happen. Oh, exactly. and I actually yeah, just yeah. recently, I think it was yesterday, I read an article about how this country is further behind in uh, paying, learning, in the process of paying your bill at a restaurant than any other one in the world. Oh, we Every, are. Everywhere else in the world has the little portable machines where they come right. to the table. Canada. Almost card, everywhere done. when I was in Vancouver mm-hmm. last, they come to the table, you do it all right there. Yeah. You sign, you swipe, the whole thing. There's none of this. Give them a card and they disappear. Exactly. All right. I've got bread that we've made. It's bread week. Yes. Right there. That has to come out now. Do we need Can to I go take th- it out? Can I take it out? And then we'll talk about what we did to it first? Yeah, absolutely. Right, hold on. Sure. Hold on. Oh, we, my. We're not messing around on bread week. No. Nope. Well, it's actually not messing around at all. I'd like to take this out, though. Hold on. Hey, well, I got everybody. Please head over to iTunes and search for the Sam Livecast and leave us some comments and some ratings. Oh, yeah. And subscribe, please. please. We love it when you guys do that, and we love your support, and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, Monday we did the focaccia olive rosemary bread. Yes. Super delicious, super easy, made out of pizza dough. Pizza dough, not just for pizza anymore. Look at that. Nope. There you go. It was really great. Mm-hmm. It needed something to dip it into. Like some, uh, maybe some sauce from a pasta. I, think yeah. I can dig it. Great, yeah. Olive oil, something. It was great. Great by itself, but I mean, I like to dip bread into something. Mm-hmm. So today we've made what uh, I call and what's on the website, five-minute beer bread. It's very simple. In five-minute bit of a misnomer, five minutes to put together. It takes 50 minutes, five oh minutes to, to cook. And I got to take this stupid thing. This was a ribbon from something that Kelly had. This teal. Is this teal? What color is it? Yeah, that? it looks like it. I put this on my wrist, and now I'm looking at it in the <laughs> thing here, and it's ridiculous. Just leave it. Ugh. So five minutes to make, 50 minutes to bake, and you will... The smell of baking bread in this house right now is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Amazing. It's unbelievable. So we took pictures so you could see how this whole thing started. And it starts very simply with three cups of self-rising flour. One, two, three. Simple, right? You buy it at the store. It's not a mystery. Self-rising flour in a bowl. Then you put in about three tablespoons of sugar. Nice. There you go. Pouring the sugar in. Everybody's happy. Now, of course, bread needs yeast. And so the yeast that we've used is coming out of a bottle of Newcastle Brown Ale. Mm. You can use any beer you want for this, but the beer that has flavor will add flavor to the bread. I'll use Coors Light as an example. You could absolutely use Coors Light if that's what you always have. I'm just telling (laughs) you, a beer that's darker has more flavor, and you might as well use something with flavor Rather than something without flavor. Absolutely. And you know what? Uh, and in New- my world, something like a Coors Light doesn't really have a lot of flavor. Yeah, and a Newcastle is actually deceptively sweet for how dark it is. Oh, it's a great so beer to cook with. I think it's with. a perfect one, yeah. Perfect beer. So all you do is you mix it from there. Mm-hmm. Simple. Everything you pour the beer in, everybody's happy. You take your spoon, you mix it all really nicely. It comes into, forms into basically like a big dough ball inside. Mm-hmm. And then you take that and you put it in a greased non-stick sorry into a greased uh, loaf pan it's all it is and then it dumps in sits there goes into a 350 degree oven for 50 minutes that's it five oh that's it and that's what we have behind me now wow. and now it's just resting it's still a little warm when you first pull it out you should let it rest though so i made it sunday night uh our niece our, our nephew, Adam, I mean, he's 30, uh, and his girlfriend, Emlyn, were here from Vancouver. And along with the other stuff that we made, we made that. They could not believe how good it is. It's a really neat trick. It's a great trick. All right, so it's sat for, oh, it's still warm. I like that. Oh, the smell, the smell of fresh baked bread. Very nice. Let's go down here. So check this out. Ready? Oh, cannot wait. 
Ooh, it's nice and crispy too. Crispy, look at that. Okay, come on. Crispy on the outside, not crispy on the inside. Cut one little piece. One nice, one nice little gentle piece from this. And do you know what it needs? It needs some butter. Come on. <laughs> Don't get all up in my grill. Butter, y'all. Butter, y'all. <laughs> Just half. Oh my God. Check this out. Look at that beautiful, little crispy, nicely buttered, warm piece of bread that didn't take any kneading, it didn't take any rising. It was three ingredients. And now, Okay, this is honestly about as perfect as it gets. Chucky Diamond's mother, Valerie, two doors down from my house when I was growing up, used to make bread all the time. The old school way, and I could smell it from my house and I'd go over and I'd have it. This is putting me back right there. Oh my God. You gotta do this. Please do this. Three cups of self-rising flour, three tablespoons of sugar, a bottle of Newcastle. Or anything. But please use something with flavor. Use Newcastle, you'll be happy. All right. Bread week continues Friday. We're not making bread, but we're making a bread thing. Let's put it this way. There's red onion, there's pears, and there's gorgonzola involved. Sounds mm. good already. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> You're going to love it. Thanks for hanging out with us. Tell your friends about the Sam Livecast. See you Friday.